Welcome to the NWR Virtual Health Conference. If you're just tuning in, it is May 2020 and on the line we have Oncosil Medical. Oncosil just came out of a training halt today. Oncosil is a medical device company seeking to advance radiation for cancer patients. Oncosil's Me Oncosil Medical's lead product, Oncosil, is a targeted radioactive isotope implanted directly into a patient's pancreatic tumours via an en endoscopic ultrasound. Treatment with the Oncosil is intended to deliver more concentrated and localised beta radiation compared to external beam radiation. Oncosil is fresh out of a trading halt, as I just said before, I reiterate that, after announcing a $19 million capital raise. We have Daniel Kenny with us today, and Daniel joined Oncosil Medical in January 2015 with almost 30 years experience in the global pharmaceutical and medical device industry. Daniel is an accomplished and proven biopharmaceutical business leader and in his career he has developed and successfully driven business with industry leaders such as Roche, Allergen and Baxter, working across Australia, EMEA and the US. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. We're so happy to have you. Please take it away for us. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you everyone for joining. So as Laura indicated, Oncosil is out of trading hold today and it's a very exciting opportunity for, to present on the NWR webinar. As Laura indicated, we're commercialising a breakthrough implantable radiotherapy device for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. So Oncosil was up until short, recently a late stage R&D company, but now we're rapidly moving into commercialisation with a clear focus on Europe and Asia. Uh, the company is, with its unique implantable technology, um, targeting a $3 billion addressable market. And we do see clear opportunity, despite COVID-19 impacts, um, looking to generate revenues, early revenues, later this year in Europe. Just quickly, for those that are unfamiliar with uh, pancreatic cancer, treating pancreatic cancer is indeed a very challenging and difficult area of oncology. Existing treatments for pancreatic cancer are ineffectual, resulting in very poor prognoses. The five-year uh, survival for patients with locally advanced unresectable pancreatic cancer is less than 5%, and median overall survival is eight and a half months. This is due to late diagnosis, suboptimal uh, current standard of care, and limited advances in the past 20 years. If we look at the Oncosil device, we believe we have a unique and effective solution. Um, in 1st of April, the company received its CE mark approval, so we can now market and sell the device in Europe and the United Kingdom. Also, at the time of the granting of the CE mark by the European authorities, the device was officially designated as a breakthrough technology. Um, if you've been following the story of the company recently, on March 16th, the US FDA independently uh, awarded breakthrough device designation for the technology. It is an active implantable medical device and a class three device as designated in, in the United States. So what is Oncosil? Oncosil is essentially microparticles that are injected directly into a solid tumor, in this case, pancreatic, pancreatic tumors, using ultrasound guided endoscopy. The microparticles remain inside the tumor unless the tumor is actually resected following successful implant. But the goal is to essentially uh, exhibit strong local disease control quickly to provide prolonged overall survival for these patients who have such poor prognoses. We are seeing through the PANCO study, which you see on the lower right-hand side of, the, of this graphic, an encouraging rate of surgical resection. All patients on the PANCO study were truly non-resectable before entry. So we're showing high disease control rates and significant tumor reductions. It is a single use device at present, although we do see in the future the possibility that the device can be used more than once for an individual patient. And the microparticles deliver over 100 grays of radiation exposure within three months. Just moving quickly, there is a, a wealth of clinical data to be provided for the device, but today, noting it's a 30 minute presentation, I'll just focus on two key clinical outcomes. The first of which is prolonged median overall survival. As we discussed earlier, um, Median overall survival in locally advanced unresectable pancreatic cancer is eight months. In the PANCO study, we showed a doubling of that to 18 months. This data set is maturing, 
but when we analysed the data prior to CE marking submission last year, uh, in May, we had an, a 16 month uh, median overall survival outcome. This data will continue to mature and we plan to actually do a further analysis of our maturing data later this year. So that will be published. And of course, we will share that with the investment community. The other compelling um, data that we wish to discuss today is this encouraging surgical resection rate. If you look at the right hand side in the PANCO study, we showed that through a meta analysis of the literature, that your probability of getting downstaged or having your tumors successfully removed is only 7% in the truly unresectable locally advanced group. But we see a tripling of that downstaging or that uh, rate of resection to 24%. The technical resection rate in the PANCO study was as high as 33% as several patients had their tumours um, converted from inoperable to operable, operable, but were unable to proceed with the surgery because of comorbidities or uh, other reasons that precluded them going into the Whipple procedure. So a downstaging is simply decreasing the size of the tumour, allowing a surgeon to successfully remove the tumour the value of being able to take someone and convert someone's inoperable status to operable is, uh, is quality of life, but more importantly, survival. If you, um, generally speaking, eight to nine months is your median overall survival for unresectable, inoperable, locally advanced pancreatic cancer. But if a patient can have the tumor removed, the median overall survival jumps to three years. So we see a significant opportunity for Oncosil to becoming standard of care in this area of huge unmet need our current focus is the locally advanced unresectable group, which represents approximately 40% of all patients who present with um, pancreatic cancer. This um, represents 50,000 patients in the United Kingdom and the European Union per annum. If we look at the business model, we find a highly attractive and scalable operating model for commercialization with Oncosil Medical. We have no competitors, i.e. no brachytherapy device that will compete or is approved in pancreatic cancer. We have a low uh, cost base, and we believe we can target the addressable market over time with a small, moderate sales force because treatment uh, in pancreatic cancer is very centralized. You do not need a large sales force to target, to target the, uh, the various hospitals that treat this disease. To give you an example, 92% of all pancreatic cancer patients are seen by 15 major tertiary referral centers in Australia. In the United Kingdom, 26 hospitals are deemed the appropriate ones for treating patients under the NHS. So I think it's, it's fairly evident that you don't need a large GP style size sales force. Our manufacturing capabilities are well established. We have for the last five years had an ISO 13485 manufacturing um, certification and our manufacturing capabilities are highly scalable and we have sufficient um, intermediate stock ready to meet any of the challenges moving forward with commercialization. And final point, this is a platform technology. We have studied the device in liver, primary liver cancer, and of course, pancreatic cancer. And of course, we believe this device can be used in any solid tumor moving forward. But at present, our focus is in pancreatic cancer. So looking at the commercialization strategy in some detail, we see four growth pillars uh, for the company. Obviously, on the back of the CE mark and the breakthrough designation in Europe, we clearly are moving forward on EU and UK commercialization. We have announced earlier today, as coming out of Trading Halt, that we have filed in all the key ASEAN and APAC markets, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and of course, we now have WAND registration, uh, WAND database registration in New Zealand. A third pillar, which we've talked about previously, is strategic partnerships. On the back of breakthrough designation and moving quickly into commercialization in Europe, and then subsequently uh, Asia, we believe now is the time for us to target strategic partnerships in terms of an R&D hookup potentially, but also commercialization in unique geographies such as China and Japan. Last, by no means least, is the US market entry, and I'm pleased to report that we are well advanced on our US market entry and we have a dual entry pathway, which I'll talk about shortly. So if we talk about the $3 billion global addressable market for the device, it's $3 billion based on a list price of 25,000 US dollars a dose in pancreatic cancer. 
And you can see quite clearly here, we've broken down the locally advanced pancreatic cancer incidence by year. And you can see quite clearly the breakdown of the total addressable revenue potential. So for the UK, we are approved to sell. European Union, we are ready to sell in that market. And that's a, a roughly a billion dollar addressable market for us to, to challenge and to target. Singapore, Hong Kong and Australia, modest in terms of size, but once again, very targeted centres. If you want to target pancreatic cancer in Singapore, you target just two hospitals, the Singapore General and the National Cancer Institute. Hong Kong is very similar. Vast number of patients are actually seen from the Hong Kong Territory at the Prince of Wales Hospital. These hospitals and centres are known very well to us. China and Japan represent opportunities of significance, 1.5 billion. But for us to target that, we really need to focus on strategic partnerships. And finally, um, we, with the breakthrough designation granted by the US FDA, we see a, a clear pathway to move forward to get approval um, in the 2022-2023 timeline using the breakthrough designation to expedite approval and um, uh, expedite development and approval for what is a half a billion dollar locally advanced unresectable pancreatic cancer market. But let's focus on Europe just briefly. First revenues, we will target the top 20 centres in Europe. Uh, five are already, prior to the COVID pandemic really taking effect, were already certified for commercial use. And we are now transitioning our training and certification processes online, as many of us have done over the past month or so. So we will clearly be on track to have those 20 centres ready whenever the situation in uh, hospital access allows us to actually start to launch. Our focus is on winning and activating these large tertiary referral centres with a very dedicated, small and focused sales team. Once activated, we expect these hospitals will quickly move to transition all eligible patients um, who have locally advanced unresectable pancreatic cancer onto the device. As we talked about, these patients have very few treatment options and we believe our device with its compelling outcomes in terms of prolonged overall survival, strong local disease control, and of course that encouraging surgical resection rate will lead to many eligible patients being put on the therapy as soon as possible. So we expect a strong network effect and exp exponential sales growth as we share experiences from these top 20 hospitals with additional hospitals uh, coming on board. So as you can see, it's a repeatable sales model on slide 13 to drive increased penetration. So we will engage in uh, activating and certifying these sites. We will train the relevant practitioners and we will build evidence and we will publish and we will repeat that model. So you'll see that circular motion of selling to hospitals, targeting the attractive hospitals first and then building up from there. So just moving quickly onto the US, as I said, last but by no means least, with the US FDA breakthrough designation from mid-March, we clearly now see a way to work with the FDA in terms of finding an expedited development and approval process to target that half a billion dollar US market. We have been working with the FDA closely since 2016 when we were awarded the Investigational Device Exemption or IDE. We have an ongoing study in the United States uh, where the lead site is MD Anderson, also working with Cedar sinai Johns Hopkins and the Moffitt Cancer Center. But with the rare breakthrough device designation being granted last year, we feel that we can look to um, finding an expedited um, program to get us into the market in the 2022-2023 timeline. But something a little bit nearer, uh, near focus is bile duct cancer or cholangiocarcinoma. In December 2018, the US FDA granted the company a humanitarian use designation for intrahepatic and distal bile duct cancer. We are currently proceeding with a filing for distal bile duct cancer, and we plan to submit that to the FDA uh, in Q2 this year, and with the hope that we will get an approval later this year, which will allow us to launch uh, a commercial launch in the United States in bile duct cancer in 2021. So clearly, uh, near and midterm opportunities in the United States, in addition to our Asian and European commercialization pathway. Just mindful of the time, do want to draw your attention to our experience board, arguably one of the stronger boards uh, on the ASX small med, med, med device biotech space, led by Chris Roberts, former chairman of Certex, and of course, 
former CEO of Cochlear. I'm very proud to lead a very experienced team of executives, two things to highlight, many of whom uh, have left or have come across to Oncosil after a very successful career at Certex. And that Certex experience is rel very relevant as Certex pioneers, pioneered the resurgence or the renaissance of brachiotherapy or internal radiation treatment and oncology with a particular focus on liver. I'd like to draw everyone's attention as we came out of Trading Halt today, announcing a $19 million placement and rights issue. Uh, we also announced the appointment of Nigel Lang as our European president to lead our European commercialization. Nigel was the former group COO and CEO of Certex, but prior to taking up the interim CEO role based in Sydney, he was the head of European commercial operations for Certex for over 13 years. He drove their commercialization, having established over 300 sites using the device. David James and Michael Warren have worked with Nigel on those early days in Europe. And Charles Rowland has been working with our team for three years and he's the former president of Certex US. So I think we have the management team more than capable of commercializing uh, this technology along with a board who understands the need for expedited development, approval and commercialization. So finally, to, to wrap up this brief presentation, we can go to questions. We, we have several uh, upcoming catalysts and strong news flow. The first of which is coming out of capital raising today with a $14 million placement and a rights issue commencing later this week, uh, providing us with strong cash reserves to meet all our near term opportunities. The other key thing uh, is obviously the appointment of Nigel Lang to head our European operations, the filing of the humanitarian device exemption for bile duct cancer in Q2 this year. We are anticipating in the second half of the year regulatory approvals in Hong Kong and Singapore. We'll also be providing updates on our maturing long-term safety data. We are expecting uh, modest uh, early revenues in Europe and the United Kingdom in the second half of the year, COVID permitting, COVID-19 permitting. And of course, we are planning to um, file on HDE uh, in Q2 with an expectation of approval for bile duct cancer at the, uh, in Q4 this year. Obviously, regulatory clearance in Australia could be expected in 2021, and the first procedures for U.S. bile duct cancer could also be expected following approval later this year in early 2021. With that, I might pause for questions. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much for that, Daniel. That was great to hear from you, especially on you know, such, a, such an important day for Oncosil as a company. Um, we have some questions that have come through in the last couple of minutes, actually. Someone's asking, and this is quite a uh, straightforward question, what is the difference between Oncosil's product and Certex's product? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Certex's product is um, Yttrium-90 um, isotope and their product focuses exclusively on liver approved indications, primary liver cancer or metastatic colorectal cancer. The difference for us is we have microparticles which can be put into any solid tumour um, using ultrasound guided endoscopy or CT guided uh, percutaneous injection. We can also target the liver, pancreas and obviously bile duct cancer. The difference with Certex is Certex is limited to, to the liver indication as they put in a catheter into the hepatic artery. Mm -hmm. So us as a platform technology where the Certex technology, which is very elegant and very effective in liver, is limited to, to uh, as I said, approved indications in liver. So we see a, a broadening of our opportunities moving forward. I think we're demonstrating that with a filing, perhaps as early as uh, this month for bile duct cancer. Mm -hmm. And someone um, with experience with Certex, of course, is Nigel Lang, who is a recent appointment to Oncosil. What does that mean for the company and um, its progress in Europe specifically and its launch in Europe? Yeah. Which may uh, realistically be the end of this year. Yes, COVID-19 permitting, we do see a clear opportunity to, to launch and get early revenues in Europe. Nigel brings a wealth of experience um, as a very experienced uh, pharmaceutical and medical device uh, executive, but particularly his experience 
are heading up European operations um, allows us to be able to apply a sales, marketing and reimbursement uh, model that has been proven to be successful. I think it's also fair to say Nigel has a, a wealth of networking. Many of the centres that focus on uh, liver also focus on pancreas and bile duct cancer. So I think Nigel brings tremendous experience to the table, but also an understanding of, of European um, operations and how the markets work there. I spent uh, 12 years of my career operating in Europe, and you do need people who have a depth of experience in Europe. And with Nigel leading that operation, I think we, we have the team now that can deliver commercial success. What month or what, what quarter would we be looking at a launch in Europe? That's a, a really great question. Um, much of our regulatory activity is not impacted by the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. The reality is that our launch preparedness is being compromised currently with the pandemic. Access to hospitals is exceedingly difficult for training and certification. Hence, we're going online to be able to to certify and activate all of these sites. However, the tragedy is that these patients, uh, particularly pancreatic cancer patients, but other cancer patients and other, you know, um, uh, difficult and challenging um, diseases still have to be treated during the pandemic. And we, we are finding that we, it's, it's a, a likely prospect that perhaps in Q4, the need for this therapy to be introduced into the European setting will become a more, more uh, prominent. Um, but we are monitoring the situation closely and, and we're in touch with all of the key centres that we've had experience with in the past. And there is a genuine willingness to launch the product, but only at the time that uh, is applicable for the NHS and for, for our, particularly our German hospitals. But I think it's a realistic expectation, uh, COVID-19 permitting that we could look at modest rev revenues in uh, Q4. I'm looking elsewhere now, Daniel, um, you clearly have approvals across ASEAN and APAC. And as you pointed out at the start of the presentation, it is a $3 billion market that we're dealing with here. Um, in the last slide on the screen now, you've got you know, your regulatory clearance in Hong Kong and in Singapore. Uh, what about China and Japan? How are things progressing in those markets? Or what are you thinking about those markets? I think for Europe uh, and the key ASEAN and APAC markets, such as Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, New Zealand and Australia, we clearly have a, a deep knowledge of those markets. We also have a very good understanding of the regulatory environment in Japan and China. And we've had a, a, a number of um, explorations on the regulatory pathway in China. But we do realise that to actually be successful in those markets, to tap the huge potential, we really do need to look at the strategic partnership. Um, Oncosil feels very confident about the other geographies, but for us to be ultimately successful in China or Japan, we need a strategic partner, and we will be now vigorously pursuing that opportunity as we move forward on the back of the recent regulatory success and the recent um, FDA and European breakthrough um, device designations. I think finding a partner, uh, finding the right partner is a critical step, but finding the right partner under these circumstances will be um, uh, a more achievable goal than if we tried earlier. So that's, that's how we want to approach China and Japan. It is clearly a stated goal for us to uh, look at those markets, but only under the guidance of a strategic uh, partnership uh, mm -hmm. action. Well, as you have pointed out, there's, a, there's potentially a lot of promise in Europe and you know, your CE mark was granted in April, uh, which is quite a unique situation to be awarded that prior to uh, completion of trials for, for devices in your area. So uh, I, I guess it's all, all systems go for Europe first and then, and then work out from there. Where to next? Yeah, essentially Europe is, is the first opportunity for us to commercialise. But following closely on from that will be, will be ASEAN and APAC markets, all of which recognise um, and reciprocate the CE marking. But each country also looks at the data. The PANCO study and the ONCPAC-1 study operating in the US continue. We're following all of those patients through long-term follow-up. And obviously, we will be starting um, soon uh, a US trial for pancreatic cancer. So our R&D work will continue. Um, so will our publications and presentations to try and 
fuel um, COVID-19 pandemic permitting, fuel the commercialization. In this area of huge unmet need, there is a need for new therapies to try and improve outcomes. And I think the data we have already has given us the CE marking and given us the breakthrough designation. I think clinicians will, uh, will be keen to use this technology. And I think those approvals will drive the clinical adoption. Mm -hmm. Peter has a question for you, Daniel, and he's asking if Ampicil is already trading X rights. Sorry, you just broke up then. I, is is I Oncosil, rights. Yes, is Oncosil already trading X rights? I haven't looked at the at the share price today, to be honest. But we're I don't, in real time here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy day, but yeah. no, I, I I don't believe we're trading at X rights. And Quinton has a question: When does Oncosil expect to be realistically expect to be profitable? That's a, a great question. We're not providing formal guidance here today, but just to give um, him some guidance, with 20 sites um, treating two to three patients uh, per, per month over a 12 month period, that would generate $20 million of revenue. And so we could realistically expect sometime um, once we're starting to hit 30 or 40 centers that we'll be getting close to segmental profitability. But right now giving guidance in the middle of a pandemic Although we're confident of first revenues later this year, I think uh, I think it's fair to say that providing guidance on on a break even would be would be difficult. But I think over time we'll be happy to share the market, share with the market uh, unit dose sales, and of course um, um, the number of sites that we're activating. Mm -hmm. Well, it's our guidance maybe to leave it there for today. Thank you for joining us on such a busy day for Oncosil Daniel, and we'll follow along in the future. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present and thank, uh, thank everyone for their interest in Oncosil on this very busy but exciting day. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining us. Next up, we have Immutep. Immutep is a globally active biotech company. They're a leader in the development of LAG3 related immunotherapeutic products for the treatment of cancer and autoimmune diseases. Stay on the line. We'll be back shortly. Thank you. <laughs>